Welcome everybody to a tutorial on how to use the free SkyCiv design tool. So to get access to this tool, all you have to do is sign up at skyciv.com and once you log in, there's a left menu here with all our available software and you just select the design tool there and it'll take you to this screen here where you have uh, an option where you can select which design check software you'd like to use. So we have a number of different uh, design standards that you can select from. Uh, for today's example, I'm going to take us through an AISC 360, 10, ASD, so I'm just going to select that and I'm going to hit start and that's going to load the design module for me. And the first thing it's going to ask me is what unit system I'd like to use. So I'm going to go ahead and run with Imperial. And now if I loaded any other design module, they've got a very similar interface. So at the top we have the title of what uh, module we've loaded, a bit of information about that particular design standard. And then we've got um, some tabs and some input fields. So I'm going to take us through tab by tab uh, and a, a real example here. And the first one we're going to look at is uh, details, which is basically the project details of this structure. So um, it's going to ask me what the project name is. So I'm just going to call this project one, the ID. Uh, so it's going to ask me my company name, who the designer is, and who the client is for. Now these are these are all optional, um, but what they do is they'll actually come out in the design report, um, and it's, it's just a very professional way to add that extra information in. You can also add project notes, so you might want to assign what uh, you know load combinations were used or any assumptions that you took. So it's a really great uh, area where you can add extra information to do with the structure. For this uh, particular case, I'm just going to leave it blank, and we'll move on to the factors. So these are the design factors or the assumptions made throughout the uh, structure. Uh, or throughout the design, sorry. Um, they're pre preloaded for you, but if you did want to adjust them, you can change these factors at any time. But for now, I'm happy with them being 1.67 for this AISC. The third tab is our design members. So this is probably the most important um, area of the software because this is actually where we're defining our members, uh, the materials, and their sections. So at the top table here, we have design members. So I can uh, add more members here just by clicking Add Member. And so we'll, we'll do a five member structure here. Um, and I can see they're just adding incrementally. So we can see member IDs are just adding each time. And we've got our different columns here. So we've got material ID, section ID, we have the length, and then we've got some design um, factors here that, that you can change, but are also preset based on um, the AISC. And we have these little eye um, infographics here, so you can just hover over these at any time to figure out what um, those particular columns are referring to. And again, they are different um, design code to design code, uh, but in this particular case, uh, in the AISC, this is what we're dealing with, these factors. So I'm going to start just by adding some materials. So first one I'll do is just a preset material, because you, you do have some loaded presets materials here. I'm just going to do structural steel, add material, and you can see that's populated within the table here. And I'm going to go ahead and add another one as a custom material. So you can add custom materials. So maybe this one's a high tensile steel. And just add the Young's modulus and the yield strength and the ultimate strength in KSI. And I can see that's populated there, and I have a summary of the different materials that I'm using. And you can also go back and edit or delete those materials uh, just by hitting the edit or delete buttons. On the right, we have our sections. So if you go add section, um, these are all preloaded from our AISC library. So you can select from all sorts of different uh, shapes from the AISC library. I'm going to load a rectangular um, hollow section. And I'll just do maybe a 10 by 4, something like that. I'm just going too far. 10 by 4, 1 8. Add that section. Again, you can see it's populated within the table there. You can also view the different uh, result or the different um, sorry properties of that section there. And uh, I'll just add another one. I'm going to add a W shape. Like a 14, 145. And I can see now that's populated too as well. 
So then if I go back up to my design members, um, I mentioned earlier we're going to do a, a five member structure. So I might want to adjust the length of these, the spans of these structures. So I'm just going to hit maybe five, 3.75. And I'm just entering through these so I can do it quite quickly. So I've got two different types of sections and I'll assign the W shapes to these ones and maybe the uh, different the high tensile materials to these uh, hollow rectangular sections. So for instance, uh, member ID 1 has a material of 2, which is a high tensile steel, and a section ID of 1, which is a hollow rectangular and a length of 5 foot. So um, that's just an example of, of one of the members that I've used and I've gone through and we're designing for five members here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm able to move on to the forces now. So these are just, we're inputting basically the forces to which we want to design these members to. Um, so one way would be, for instance, to go to an analysis tool such as SkySiv Beam. And again, this is uh, free as well. So if I was just to go to Beam here, I would have access to this analysis tool. And I've just done a simply supported Beam here. And just looking at the results, um, I could get my results from this table here and input them into the design module. Uh, to do the design check for the structure. So you can use the analysis tool or you might have your already um, the, the loads that you have that you want to design for. So I'm just going to go ahead and input some forces in here. So um, something like 50 kip feet as a vertical force, uh, a shear force, and maybe 10 foot axial force. You can put some of these at zero if you don't want to design for certain um, certain results or certain forces. But once I've entered all those in, I just hit apply and I can see that a new load combination has been added. So I have my load combination one here. I could add more if I want, but um, I'm happy with just the one load combination. So I'll just keep that there and I'm pretty much ready to check my design. So I've added um, all the properties, uh, sorry, the project details. I've adjusted my factors if I needed to. I've entered my members, the materials and the sections. Uh, added the forces that I want to design for and I'm ready to check my design. So I just run the check design. And I can see immediately that uh, a couple of them have failed. So here under the design ratios, um, I can see that the it looks like the hollow rectangular shapes have failed. And it's actually highlighting in red why they're failing. So I can see the member at the moment Z is uh, has a factor of 2.3, which is obviously above the capacity of 1 or the design ratio of 1. Um, shear force it's in the Y is also failing at 1.965 and then I was, I've also got the combined axial and moment force which is combining the axial here and the moment forces here and that's got a factor of 3.297 and what that's basically saying is it's uh, the fact that if it's one it's it's okay anything under one is a pass I can see here these, these structures are passed because they're all under one but because this is um, over capacity and it's over by a factor of 3.3 .3 almost, um, that member, that particular member is failing. So what I might want to do is actually go back to my members and I can edit this hollow rectangular section. So obviously it's too thin or too weak. So I'm just going to go up to a higher or a larger shape, maybe to something like 16, 5 eighths, 8 by 5 eighths and update that section. And now if I rerun the check design, Hopefully, yep, we've gone ahead and they're all passed. So I can see that all, now all my ratios are under under one uh, and therefore passing the AISC 360 design. Uh, so what I might want to do now that everything is passed, I might want to run the uh, design report. And what that's going to do is actually show me a preview of, uh, of the report before I go ahead and download in PDF. And I can review it. I can take a look at some of the, um, the capacity tables, things like that but I'm happy with it. I'll just hit download PDF and this will actually save to my local drive. And I can see uh, what design code was used, what provision. Um, I can see the information I put in the beginning of the design, which was the project ID, the company and the designer. And then I've got all the design input information. So I've got my factors, uh, the materials, the sections that were used, uh, the properties uh, and the member properties as well. And then finally, I have the member design capacity, which is obviously a really important table for the engineers because they can actually look at, at what these members are capable of, of, uh, of uh, holding under the AISC 360. 
and then the design ratios, which is obviously what the table we were looking at earlier. And I can see that they're all checked off as being okay. And the ratios are all under one. So this is a, a PDF report that I can uh, share, I can download, um, I can print. And under the enterprise account, you actually have your logo there as well. So when you're sharing this, it's also a marketable uh, document that you can um, circulate. So once I'm done there, um, I can close out. And this is the free version, so uh, you have available access to all this um, for free uh, by signing up skysiv.com forward slash free dash sign up. Um, and it also is integrated with our structural 3D program as well. So under the enterprise account, this is actually integrated within the Beam and the uh, structural 3D software. So you don't actually have to take that extra step of entering in your members and your forces. You can actually uh, design for the AISC directly within the um, Beam or the Structural 3D software. But uh, that, that there concludes our um, tutorial today on the free SkySiv design software. Um, so feel free to sign up for a free account at skysiv.com. Otherwise, if you have any questions or any feedback, uh, feel free to email us at support at skysiv.com. So we hope you enjoy the tool. And again, please let us know if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you.